Hi, my name is Courtney Cobb, and I participate in varsity soccer. We had practice at 6 this morning, so I'm trying to be as awake as possible. And I participate in varsity choir, which is crap. Okay, Jefferson City High School's Great Pulling Program is my title. Oh, sorry, wrong way. And by Courtney Cobb. Me. Um, my idea is Jefferson City High School has a great bowling program, which many students encourage because of past experiences and how safe the students feel when they enter the building. Even though some people think that bullying and harassment policies limit their right to free speech. Okay, so raise your hand if you have ever been bullied. Anyone in this room? Come on, don't be shy. Okay, I have two. And statistics show one out of four kids have been bullied. Also, raise your hand if you have witnessed bullying. 56% yeah. of students say they have witnessed bullying, which is a big percent. Bullying harassment policies. Pros and cons to it is, bullying effect, a pro is bullying affects millions of students. Students should have an outlet to go to if they need help. So if you're being bullied, you should always have, like you can go to the counselor and say, Please help me because if they didn't have an outlet, they could do things for themselves that would not be good. A con is every time a new bullying or harassment policy is made, it limits a student's right to free speech even more. So students should have the right to say, I don't like this teacher, but there's also a fine line between being rude and being just saying it in general. Um, another pro is bullying is a big problem, and the bullying and harassment policies help us fix it. So no one should be bullied and not be able to, the bully should not be able to get in trouble. I mean, should be able to get in trouble, sorry. A con is students regularly face investigation and punishment for expressing different views. Like, you can't, you don't, you're not supposed to talk about your religion at school. So that kind of limits the right to free speech, but I can also see why we have that policy. Because they could get fights. The reason why I chose this is be, the reason why students think at JC that there's a good bullying program is because the amount of safety students feel when students walk inside the building. So I feel pretty much all everyone feels safe when they walk inside the building. If you don't, you can disagree with me, but I think, I do at least. Past experiences at other schools, I know that I came from a private school and there I got bullied and there's a difference from here where you get ISS if someone is bullying someone and there you're getting five minutes off recess. There's just a different policy there. And also have students witness bullying being taken care of. You don't just see a principal walk by a student being bullied and just not acknowledge it because they take care of it when they see it. What I've learned through my process of writing my paper and coming up with my presentation, I have learned that by interviewing one of our principals, Mr. Renzi, he said one of our administration's big priorities is making sure we feel safe when we walk into the building. So I feel it's a good thing that our administration makes sure, make sure we are safe when we walk inside the building. Students at Jefferson City High School do not allow bullying. If they see it, they immediately report it or walk over and stop it. I know that there's been, when there's a fight, you don't just see people, some people crowd around it, but there's always a person that's trying to stop the fight or there's the principals that's trying to stop the fight. Um, bullying is not okay and does not make anyone feel good. The victim, the bystander, which is like the person witnessing bullying, or even the bully. It can hurt them mentally for the rest of their life. You, when you grow up and someone does that to you, you're always gonna remember that in the back of your head. Like, if you walk into the office, you're gonna be like, am I still a loser or do I, am I just, everything? oh, sorry, I apologize. And also, bullying can also hurt students academically, which could also affect them for the rest of their life. So if you're getting bullied and you get F's because you feel bad about yourself, then colleges aren't going to want you if you apply because of your bad GPA and stuff like that, which is also not good. And um, these are some examples of bullying. Eight victims of bullying and one killed herself, so that's not very good statistics. And also a new thing, cyberbullying, just saying I hate you. Another thing of cyberbullying. Also, through texting, it's happened now these days that we say things through texting. Someone laughing at another student at school, just physically abusing someone, again through texting, and gossiping or rumors, and then again, just gossiping or rumors. And the thing is to stop bullying. Thank you. Any questions? Anyone got a question? Don't be shy.
I have a question. Do you feel like students have the, the right to freedom of speech or do you have the responsibility to exercise those rights? I feel like there is a fine line between saying your right to speech, like calling someone a loser, or like saying a bad word about them, and also saying like, I don't, we're not, we don't have the same thing in common, I just don't think we should associate with each other. There's always a, always a fine line. If you say you don't like a teacher, you can just say, I don't like this teacher. Or you can say something that would offend the teacher. So there's always a fine line between there. Anyone else? Oh, all right. Good job, Courtney. Hi, my name is Sophie Herbenge, and I am doing Open Campus Lunch. Benefits of an Open Campus Lunch. Jefferson City High School should have the option of an open campus lunch because JCHS students could go home or go out to lunch and have the option of healthier lunch choices. Having a longer lunch period would give students the opportunity to seek out healthy lunch choices. Right now, students waste a lot of their lunch period standing in line. Open campus lunch could result in many positive benefits such as lessons and responsibility, time management, trustworthiness, and healthier eating habits. Freedom to make choices help students grow and mature. Open campus lunch might also decrease the obesity rate by allowing students to leave campus and select more nutritious foods. Pros and cons of an open campus lunch. Pros, um, healthier lunch options, longer lunch periods, freedom to make choices, learn responsibility, and trustworthiness. Cons, students not returning to school, more opportunity to get into trouble. Teachers and parents may worry about st students and inexperienced drivers wrecking. What I have learned from this research is an open campus lunch teacher students time management skills, trustworthiness, and responsibility. Happy students makes a happy school, and an open campus lunch just may help the obesity problem. And Jefferson City High School should have the option of an open campus lunch because JCHS students could go home or go out to eat lunch and have the option of healthy lunch. Do you guys have any questions? Sophie, how long do you think lunch should be if we have a, go to an open, open campus lunch? Like an hour. About an hour. Okay. <laughs> what do you, you would... Okay. Courtney, will we get rid of an advisory or like how would we fit that in? Would we still get out the same time? We would probably get rid of an advisory and get out at the same time. Hey, is Chris Sharp in class? Yes, he is. Could you please send him up to the office for a few minutes and he'll return? Thank okay. you. And would like we kind of have academic labs in the morning and like do you go to like different mm -hmm. classes as well? And I'm doing passing um, in between passing time and class. Classes. And I need the passive time overload because most kids don't have the time. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh. okay. My thesis was Jefferson City High School should allow eight more minutes for passing time to decrease the amount of parties and absences. I chose this thesis because most kids here recently they've been getting more parties and they do absences, which I'm going to have a graph here later to show that. And they don't have the time for getting there to class, so they get parties and if they get so many parties they get kicked out for a certain amount of time. There, the pros to it is, the good thing about improving time is that you have more time to get to the class that happens to be on the other side of the school. And 
students will also have time to finish do homework that they can turn in. And they have time to talk with friends for a little longer. The cons are the troublemakers will have more time to cause problems for the rest of the school and have time for longer arguments with friends and other students. So that if there's an argument going on, they don't have that time to hurry up and get advice to stop the argument. It can go on longer. This chart here shows how the A-plus program is bringing the attendance up. Because first, in 2007, it was around 29%. And then, in 2008, kids, I messed up, sorry. The first, this section here is about how many kids dropped out because they wasn't getting the knowledge they needed. It, the first percentage was at 29%. That's how many kids were dropping out and how many passed. Um, in 2008, with the A-plus program, it went up to a 51%, which is a dramatic change from 2007. And then in 2009, it went even higher, up to 72%, which is a dramatic increase. But now this, this here shows how many kids actually passed in that time period. Which, at first, in 2007, was at 70% exactly. And then, as once you guys invented the A-plus program, it went up to 2000, or in 2008, it went up to about an 89. And then in the last year, it was just about 95%, which in another few years, because I was able to find the most recent dates, that they might be over the average. So what this ties into mine is that more kids are attending school, but less are going to have time to succeed because they don't have that time to class and they get pulled out to the parties. What I've learned from this is I learned that students are coming to school, but the tardies have stayed the same and we need to find a way to improve it. And that is all for my slide. Any questions? Um, I was wondering where the A-plus program came in with the um, time between classes. Because that increases the amount of kids that are coming into the school, because most of them are heading for that goal, but then the time in between classes are preventing them from getting there because they get targets. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you, Corey. program. The pros of increasing Jefferson City High School's character education program, it would reduce violence, create a more civil community, improve academic performance, and prepare students to become responsible citizens, and it would create a safer learning environment. The cons of increasing the school's character education program would be it's costly and difficult to ob obtain full participation between students and teachers and conflicting values could be ch taught easily. The character education program that we have now is, oh sorry, who can tell me what our character education program is now here at our school? Talk about it a little bit in my mm -hmm. um, So that's all. Yeah, I think. Is it like today? Um, this month's name, isn't it like motivation or something? Oh, uh, we switched the month. <laughs> we did? That was January. Oh, oh that was honesty. <laughs> yeah, honesty. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, at least I know that one. Okay, you have last month and this month. Yeah. Who knew the sole purpose of advisory was for care to education and team building? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Mm -hmm. And 
in your student handbook. Oh, socially and have an overall better conduct in school and the many pros of having it outweigh the cons. Any questions? <laughs> what do you want to see done in advisory? Like, More like revolving around character education because in my advisory I, we go in and then for instance we'll Wednesday. She told us the character education word of the month and then did. <laughs> well, in my advisory, I'm going to be able to write this paper about who's the most honest person in our life. Oh, so I guess. Really? Yeah, thanks to our advisory process. It depends on the teacher. But it's not as consistent. Yeah, it's not consistent. Nick, I have a question the slide before this, can you flip back to that, where you said that create an instant gratification award program. Can you give us a sample of what you're thinking? Um, like, who displayed the character education award of the month? It's like some kind of an award for, or just recognition of people that have displayed the like, student of the month thing. Sure. Did you have a question? Oh, you answered it. Okay. Any other questions? Good job. This is just a fraction of what every American right now is using in paper. This can be in a week, or a whole semester of a school. This is why we need to go to paperless learning. This can be easy to achieve, and all you have to do is use some kind of tablet or PC, and you're there. I teach because when you learn, you become a better person. Always. I get to see young minds blossom, grow, develop. The ability to engage a student is the key to being a good teacher. Using outdated materials such as textbooks makes that job much more difficult. In textbooks, you know, there's diagrams, but they're static. Something like a cell membrane is a, is a fluid thing. It's always moving. With U.S. history, they print a textbook and it's outdated almost the second that it's printed. Textbooks are very expensive. Um, they're usually 60 to to $100 for different textbooks. So 
They're adopted for five years and then you're stuck with them. They're uh, extremely heavy and if you have three or four in a backpack, you know, it's, it's a lot of weight and so some students will simply um, just quit bringing textbooks to class. There is no reason today to assume that kids have to use the same tools that they used in 1950. In fact, to do so is to prepare them for a world that's already passed. Education has always been a big part of Apple's DNA. And that's because we really believe that technology can make a profound difference in the way that teachers teach and kids learn. And we now have the opportunity to change one of the cornerstones of education, the textbook. With the iPad, we're making textbooks so much more engaging. By adding audio, video, and interactivity, the content comes to life in ways that are just not possible on the printed page. The information is always up to date, and instead of carrying 30 pounds of books in a backpack, you just need one iPad. These new textbooks are going to allow students to do things they could never do before. When we set out to bring textbooks to iPad, there were really three areas we focused on. We wanted to have really fast, fluid navigation. We wanted to have beautiful graphics. And we wanted to create a better, easier way to take notes and use those notes. When you integrate photography, video, audio, interactive objects, and keynote animations right into the page, the material becomes so much more immersive and compelling. And you can do things you just can't do with a static paper textbook. Taking notes is one of the key ways students learn. So we're introducing some amazing new ways to take notes on iPad. When you see something you're interested in, you just swipe over it and it's highlighted. When you want to add a note, you just tap on it and type. And when you're ready to use your notes, you have an elegant study card view. It's all automatically organized for you, so you just don't have to think about it. Up to now, making interactive books for iPad has been difficult. So we wanted to make it easier. These iPads make the classroom very efficient and moves along very smoothly with the textbooks. These textbooks bring a whole new span of ideas that people can use to further grow on the student's mind and better interact with them. Even in foreign countries, people are still going paperless. This is very great, especially when you can draw or write papers, anything you need to do, and it's all digital, easy to save, and no, it uses no paper at all. Here you can see they are using the web and Word. This makes research extremely easy to write a paper if you don't have to move back and forth from paper to typing just to get your information. This allows teachers for a better one-on-one -on -one experience and also lets them grade and check papers much easier than before on paper. Donated the iPads in hopes of finding a successful high-tech way to create a paperless classroom. For students, it's a welcome switch. An iPad's totally better. One of the things that we're going to try to accomplish with this project is to make this a paperless classroom. So the teacher will send them their tests on the iPad, they will take the test, send it back. Our kids are, you know, going to learn so much from these iPads and it's a great teaching tool and I think that they're going to have a lot of fun, you know, learning from them. A wonderful addition to your class. Those iPad additions, judging by the Christmas morning-like expressions on the Kenton County students' faces, are already a hit. It helps me learn because it involves two of kids' most favorite things, technology and playing. Totally. I mean, every single time, I never actually imagined having an iPad. I feel like I can do anything with it. The iPads come preloaded with video game-like applications written to improve science, technology, engineering, and math skills in younger students. With this, you can play around and learn at the same time. And we thought it would be a, a fun way to introduce science projects, new math projects, and also, you know, kind of bring technology to life for the, for the younger kids. Class members were given skills tests prior to receiving the iPads. They will be retested at the end of the year. Results from the study will be used to shape future paperless classroom learning. 
Some of you elementary was selected for the $30,000 pilot program as a result of the Kenton County School District's commitment to conservation. Kenton County has already done so much work in energy efficiency and plus the environment. They look at the renewable piece when they're putting in new buildings and so we've had such a great partnership with them. We thought it was the perfect place to start with the younger kids and just let them learn as they go. And judging by Jessica Cook's enthusiasm, that new learning process is already on the fast track. I think that Jefferson City High School should definitely continue to promote the anti-bullying policies so that we can reduce the physical and emotional stress that comes to students on a daily basis <coughs> because they could lead to more destructive behaviors and that would cause more stress on everybody else in their world. Bullied kids <coughs> are more likely to be depressed, anxious, and suicidal. They struggle in school and they tend to be absent a lot more than the average student. And they're also more likely to carry weapons, get in fights, and use drugs. Anybody can really help against the bullying. All you have to do is a couple of things. You can take advantage of your advisory speak up about any problems you could be having or anything that's causing you any trouble at all. And if you see someone in the hallway who looks like they're having a bad day or having a hard time, just reach out to them. Like even saying hi or just smiling at them could turn their whole day around. I learned that although results may not be immediate, it's important to continue to keep trying to eliminate bullying because It'll create a more comfortable environment for everybody in the school, and that'll reduce the stress that teenagers face on a daily basis, not just in school, but at home too, because they won't have to come to school and worry about if they're going to be ridiculed or judged for just being themselves. Any questions? I did my research on drug testing for all students. And my name is Kelly. <laughs> Currently, Jefferson City High School only athletes are getting tested for drugs. Approximately 12 out of every 2,500 students in the first two years of drug testing tested positive for drugs. Here. Mr. McGurk said, what is our athletic director? He said that we're not trying to get drugs, we're trying to give them the out and prevent them from doing the wrong, going down the wrong path. The pros of drug testing. It gives students a reason to say no. Students fear getting tested. Expectations would rise for everyone. Since currently, like, it's only for athletes, then it makes the leaders feel like they have it makes them feel like they have higher expectations because they expect more of them. And drug use throughout the whole entire school would decrease. The crime of drug testing legal issues, people feel that like it invades all their rights. And the cost of the drug testing program is pretty expensive for them to send it off and get it tested and figure out whatever drug they're whatever the drug that they're using. All students should be doing should be drug tested during the high school, not just the athletes and leaders of the school. It isn't fair that band, show choir, or any other extracurricular activity does not have to be tested. Every student should have equal expectations and treated the same. Therefore, drug testing all students, not just the athletes, should be changed in the future. What I've learned, as time goes on, more and more kids are doing drugs. Drug testing decreases the rates of drug use and makes students want to make better decisions. It is becoming more popular in the United States to drug test throughout the entire school. And students that do drugs tend to go down the wrong path and continue making their wrong decisions in the school. Drug testing is the best possible way to stop the use of drugs. Why do you want this to be ended? Just because you think it's unfair? Because I think that like everybody should. Well, it's like what we've been doing so far has helped the athletes make better decisions. So I don't know, it's just really effective, and it's been a good program for the athletes that everybody should have. Me.
You say that everyone should have them, but like some people, if they do get tested, they get mad because like they know they're not doing anything. Like let's just say if you have like a choir person and like she doesn't do anything and they like drug test her and like she gets mad because like they're going through like a whole bunch of trouble just to see if she has any drugs or anything and she doesn't. Like. But it would be everybody, so yeah. she couldn't like if everybody's getting it done, then she can't get mad. Yeah, like shit, like, like it's equal. Like it's random. Like I think they put it. In so what, how would you do that? Like one day everybody does it, or would you like do it in increments of like weeks or something? Well, like, I read, I, whenever I researched it on at a different school, like at the beginning of the year, whenever they get enrolled, they all get drug tested, and then like they randomly 15, 15 kids a week is too much. I thought, but like one school did fifteen kids a week, and then like whenever they found out whatever they were getting done to them, or no, whenever they got drug tested, they and if they, were, they did test positive for a drug, they put it in like a, they put them in like a rehab group, and like nobody really knew about it. So I guess that really helped. My question is, wouldn't it also have an other effect on the kids that aren't doing drugs? Because like they might have friends that they don't know are doing drugs and they get taken away. Which means that some of the kids population would not be able to have those friends to talk to, meaning the ones that are doing the drugs won't have those nice friends to help remind them that not everyone depends on those drugs. Yeah, I mean, I guess it just depends upon like what decisions they make because getting them sent away, or not really sent away, I guess, but just like getting help to them would help them become a better person in the world. That you'd want your friends to get yeah. help. Like yes. if you really care about them. No. I think the rehab part of that is the key part of that, that if they do test positive, that there is some help for them. Not that they're going to get in trouble with the law, but that there is some some rehab help for them. Yeah. Yes. Kylie, like there are some schools that have begun to look at this and take a very strong stance. Um, are you thinking that if a person doesn't give to the random sample, uh, for instance, the school that I recently looked at, uh, the student's not allowed to park on campus and they don't participate in commencement. And otherwise, uh, students all test at the beginning of the year, then there's a random selection over the first year. Mm -hmm. Is that the same research that you found with the yeah, schools I that are testing all students? Yeah, like if they, in order to get like a solo school, in order to get like a parking pass, they had to do it. Correct. Or in order to participate in the activities, they had to do it. Like if they were going to do So my thought is, what impact does it have uh, if, for instance, I, I have peers that make bad choices, we're, we're finding out that with some of our athletes right now, it provides them an out where they can yeah. say, uh, you know, hey, I don't want to do that because um, there's a chance that I may get pulled in a random sample. It provides them the opportunity not to have to be the heavy or not to have to be confrontational, but to kindly say no. Um, I'm not going to do that because basketball is important. I even think a lot of our athletes do that now. Mm -hmm. yep. know. What? Positive peer pressure. I'm not going to uh, do yeah. something wrong because. Okay. <coughs> All right. Anything else? Good job. Okay. Um, I'm Donovan Ortiz, and I'm doing school uniforms. Um, school uniform. Students should not wear skew uniforms because uniforms might fuel the students' rebellious spirit and violence might break out due to rival schools. Um, Jefferson City High School. Uh, school uniforms would hide the students' true personality. Without a uniform, a student would be able to dress to the heart's full content. And Jefferson City has a lot of very different styles and colors, which is shown throughout the halls of Jefferson City High School, right here, with the free dress uh, code policy. Um, pros and cons. Uh, some pros, some say that a child in a school uniform is more likely to take the school seriously. Putting on the school uniform signals he or she is going to school just like dad dresses up to go to work. Schools report, or 
Yeah. Schools report that when students dress in work clothes rather than play clothes, they take a more serious approach to their studying. And with school uniforms, a pro would be less bullying. Now the cons. If you didn't, if you did not wear a school uniform, um, or if you don't wear a uniform at schools that require it, then you will get a fine or a detention. They are very expensive. There's no personality, and you could be misjudged. Um, what I've learned. Uniforms decrease bullying, they help you prepare for the future, but they don't show as much personality, they're very expensive, and uniforms can get, and no uniforms can get a lot of different colors and style throughout the school. Thank you. Questions? Questions. Um, I'm confused, are you for bullying? I mean, not <laughs> 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 uh, sorry, no. Are you for Uniforms or against uniforms? I'm against school uniforms. Okay. Jaden, did you have a question? No. no. Any other questions? Any other questions? I did. Do you think that if we did get school uniforms, do you think it would like affect our school in a bad way or a good way? Um. Well, if we did get a school uniform, it might be both because some students might not really care if they have to wear a uniform because let's say you want to be a businessman or a woman in the future you have to wear like you know the suit and the ties and stuff so wearing a uniform now might help them get ready for it later Corey? I was also wondering <laughs> since I have a lot of questions supposedly today that with this um, when you do if we ever go to uh, uniform. the uniforms what would happen with the parents? Because most parents disagree with it because it does cost more money than just regular shirts and pants. Right. So they might take their kids out of this school and move them to a different one. Because that's what my mom says. She's like, she doesn't want me to go to a public or she wants me to go to a public school so I have more fun and more personality than with someone with uniform. What would you say about that? Um. If we did get a school uniform. The parents might do what you said. They might move the student out and go to a different school that doesn't have a uniform because, like what you said, they don't really uh, want to like pay for all that expensive clothing, and they just want their students to wear, you know, whatever they want while they can before they have to go like onto an actual career. So they want them to like dress free now, and then in the future they could dress like you know. <laughs> okay, so let's just say if we do get uniforms or whatever, um, will the um, schools be providing them? Considering that if we do buy uniforms from different like stores or whatever, people might try to switch it up. As in, they would get like a different type of polo shirt, but it probably might be the same color or they might get like skinny jean khakis or something like who knows like or would you rather just like buy from the school where everyone looks exactly the same um i'd probably go with what you said like they could be like dress pants like khakis and stuff but like i don't think there has to be like a certain color or well, maybe like blacks and whites and blues and stuff but nothing like bright like yellows or you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the jeans, uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Any other questions? Alright, thank you. Yeah, you have to yeah. hit the space bar. It's a 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 space
Uh, redesigning the serving area and cooking from scratch. Uh, the high school needs to have different food stations so the students can go get what they want quickly. And JCHS also needs to start cooking from scratch so that the food will be healthier. Uh, some pros. The serving area stations will have will save some time on getting food so the students will not be rushed on eating. And cook from scratch lunches will be healthier and eventually bring a profit to the school. And some cons. The redesigning will cost the high school a lot of money and buying and cooking food from scratch will cost a lot of first. Uh, what I've learned during my research, I have learned that many schools across the country are redesigning and are forbidding to meet the needs of their own isolation of students. Would you agree with the increased lunch time, or would you agree with making the cafeteria bigger? Uh, just a bigger cafeteria. Okay, because with that, you'll have. Sorry, Courtney. Oh, no, no, no. With that, you have to have more room for more opportunities because you'll be having so many different items yeah. that's going to be cooked. So it'd be complete redesigning of it, is what you're suggesting. Um, what kind of food would you want to like, cook like? Salads and stuff like that. Well, we have uh, different stations for different foods. Like you have a line for pizza, or a line for uh, like hamburgers and stuff. Any other? states that two adult high school student age students be seated on a 39-inch bus seat. School buses seat three students per seat regardless of recommendations for safety. The average school bus capacity is 72, inch, uh, 72 students. Um, now the three per seat rule and is based on elementary edit research. Uh, the they Three elementary students can sit on a bus seat, and that's why the capacity is 72. But if you follow the recommendations, as it says, for only two high school students a bus seat, then the capacity needs to be lowered. Because high schoolers are bigger than elementary students. <laughs> Another problem with the overcrowding is bullying because everyone is crammed together into a small area. So the bus driver can't, because he has to drive, so he can't focus on the students all fighting in the back of the bus. And physical and emotional bullying can lead to students skipping school and failing academically. Not only is it a problem for the students on the bus, but if the driver becomes distracted when he's on the highway, it can also be the cause of wrecks. Cost. But by rerouting a bus or getting more buses to help reduce overcrowding, it costs a lot of money for the schools. Because by rerouting the buses, schools might have to spend more money on gas or for a whole bus. <coughs> rerouting. Rerouting buses could solve overcrowding and bullying. By rerouting a bus so it isn't picking up more students would reduce overcrowding. With more room on a bus, students would be less likely to bully. Yeah. Um, do you think that with um, them rerouting, like, do you think they're going to have to add more buses considering that if you reroute, you're not going to be picking up the same people and like, if all the buses are rerouting, like, how do you know if they're going to get exactly everybody that's... I mean, because I'm, I'm not sure about all the buses. If they have less kids, then maybe the buses would, that's not overcrowded should go and pick up just a few more students so that a bus in an area that picks up all these other students doesn't have to pick up all those students. But they're out the way. Yeah. 
Yeah, if they're out the way. Um, and I guess more buses would be needed for that route specifically. Yeah. Okay, so um, back when I rode the bus back in middle school, uh, you had the bus driver and then you had another adult in the back. And uh, like, would you think that would be a good idea for the buses now? Yeah, or so I was thinking of putting something about monitoring, but I'm not sure because we're high schoolers. So I think some people would be upset that we'd have to have monitors on the bus. But I think that would help a lot just because high schoolers can't play like high schoolers. <laughs> <laughs> Um, with that, the school company or the school they have a contract with the bus the bus company, but they only have a certain amount of buses, so they won't be able to. But when one of those buses break down, they have other buses in stock. But with having to change the routes and also with having to supply money for the routes, they'll when the bus break down, they'll have to supply more buses, so that'll cost them even more money. But the thing is, they don't have the buses in backup to come get the students. And that's, that was part of what she addressed with the cost. It, it would cost more money for more buses. Okay. And then again, what about the time? Because like certain buses are supposed to be there at certain times so they can get here to school soon. I, I think she hit that with the re rerouting. We have to go into that. Uh, just thank you.